Um, if you would like to make a comment, it would be helpful if you would turn on your camera and your microphone. Um, everyone's muted to start with, but you can unmute yourselves if you have a comment. If you do have a question and there will be opportunities for questions along the way, we'll sort of have pauses. Um, a good way to, to do that if you're not on camera is to use the reactions button uh, on the bottom of your screen. Uh, the opportunity to raise your hand is there. Um, we are having a little bit of trouble with the chat function tonight. So I, I think uh, raising our hands is gonna be the, the best option. We're also going to be using a tool called Mintimeter tonight, which is a live polling uh, app. Uh, you can use that either on your smartphone or tablet or on your computer browser. Uh, we'll be showing a QR code here in a few moments. Um, that'll be your opportunity to join that poll. Uh, so if, if you've got that device ready, great. If you need to run, get it, go get it. Uh, or you can just use uh, your computer browser and kind of shrink us into one corner while we do that poll. Our agenda for the evening, uh, we've done our welcome, we've done our introductions. Uh, we'll do a little bit of background on the project so far and overview of where we are today. Um, we'll pause for questions at that point to see if anybody has any questions about the project more broadly. And then we will dig into our topic for today, which are some design discussions that James alluded to, and then talk about what comes next. So first a bit about the project uh, overview. Um, you can see at the bottom of your screen there our project site. Uh, six acres at the intersection of Hearn Avenue and Dutton Avenue uh, in the Roseland neighborhood of Santa Rosa uh, near uh, Meadowview Elementary and Southwest Community Park. A centrally located parcel, relatively flat, great to build a new civic campus uh, on. The entire vision for this six acre site includes at least three components, a fire station, a multicultural library, and a multi-purpose sports and event center. Um, right now, based on the, the funding that's been uh, made available so far, um, the, the only the fire station and the multicultural library are gonna be our focus for this phase of the project. And those are the components that we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, there will also be parking. Uh, there will also be all of the stormwater infrastructure. All of the technical aspects of the site will be built out entirely. Uh, but these are the, the project components that are part of this first phase. The type of project we're doing is going to be ultimately delivered in a design build format. So Group four and its consultants right now are partnering with the city, the library, and Kitchell to do what are called bridging documents. So uh, a set of criteria that will then be uh, shared with uh, design build entities, which are, are partnerships of contractors and engineers and architects who will then finalize the design and provide a bid for the, the construction. So our work will end towards the end of this year. Uh, that design build request for proposals and contract award will follow in, in 2024. And then we anticipate that construction will start in 2026. And those design build entities, we imagine, will, will have opportunities to come back to the community with their finalized designs. Uh, so what you're seeing today is still very much early stage, uh, but will set the tone and tenor for what comes next. And so that's where your input is really, really important in setting the mold uh, for what those design build entities uh, will be responding to. We've already done quite a bit of community outreach on the project. Uh, our first uh, phase uh, earlier this fall uh, in engaged 890 new community members. That's in addition to the over 7,000 that had been engaged prior to our involvement through surveys online and physical, kiosks at libraries and community centers and community meetings just like this one. What came out of that first round uh, were some priorities uh, focused on library spaces that, that people in the community felt like they would really get the most value out of. Uh, obviously, space for books, but multi-purpose classrooms, technology-enabled classrooms, quiet spaces to work and read, as well as spaces for play for, for children. We know how important uh, multicultural and multi-generational visits to the library are in this community. 
We also talked about what we term design values, which is finding a way for the architecture to respond to the values of the community. Um, and so we we found that natural light and indoor outdoor connections were incredibly important. Uh, a, a, an architecture that's inspired by nature and that's warm and inviting, um, all, all great things. So um, you'll see later in the project how we've taken these building design values and turn those into architectural expressions. We also talked a bit about site amenities, about where people's priorities are. Uh, people want to use the site actively for, for outdoor activities, both on a day-to-day -day basis and special events like markets and fairs. Uh, we intend to include a multi-use path, if not in this phase, then in a future phase, uh, as well as outdoor seating areas uh, in, in shade and sun. We talked about the possibility of an aquatic center. Uh, that was originally part of the vision for this site, uh, but when it became clear that the, the site area was simply not going to be large enough to accommodate quite everything that, that the community has asked for, uh, we had to prioritize. And one way of, of setting that priority was to ask the community, do you want a smaller uh, aquatic facility that might fit on this site in a reduced capacity? Or do we want to get a, an eight lane lap pool, a, a large recreational pool, and by doing so, place that aquatic center at Southwest Community Park in a future phase? And, and the overwhelming response was, let's, let's get what we want, even if it means waiting a little while and, and, and putting it in a place where it can really thrive. <clears throat> We also asked the question about the recreation center that I mentioned at the top uh, and whether we wanted a gym or not. And the feeling was that the, the, the community favored the gym and favored the kind of community events that could easily be housed within a gym. And so we get sort of more bang for our buck uh, looking ahead to that next phase uh, by, by building a large multi-purpose athletics and community facility for that, that rec component. So that's a, that's a bit of, of over, uh, overview. Any questions uh, from this group about where we've been and, and where we find ourselves today? We have a hand raise from Al Lerma. Yes, Al. Yeah, hi there. Uh, I was just curious, uh, you mentioned about the design build and the bidding process in the spring. Are there uh, measures being taken to ensure minority participation, particularly in co like in contracting to participate in the process? I'm not exactly certain of the city's requirements on that. Uh, Jason, I wonder if, if you could answer that or our partners at Kitchell would be more prepared. Uh, I, I can certainly provide some answer, but uh, actually Harding, if I could ask Kitchell to step in since they are the project manager. Um, I prefer them to provide the response. Yeah, Brian or Kevin. Sorry, uh, Harding. Do you do you uh, do you hear me? All right. I can hear you now. Okay. Yes. All right. Great. Um, yeah. At this time, um, there are the, the there may be some provisions that uh, will require. We've uh, there's some uh, PLA agreements that we're working on in the area that will um they will require some local um labor force as a priority um and we're exploring some of those options as well as the minorities and uh al uh, for you and others pla refers to project labor agreements uh it is a requirement that the city retain and hire uh, unionized professionals from local union uh hall uh, to provide and perform the construction activities on these projects. Yeah, is that the actual like uh, grades people on the site? I was referring more to the contractors who also may hire people, I guess, too. So just to make a distinction there. So there's, there's a number of minority contractors, particularly Latino contractors in Sonoma County who might be interested in bidding in some form or fashion, if not as a prime contractor, maybe as a as a subcontract. So I just wanted to make sure there's information, I guess, being made available to people if they're interested in participating. Thanks. Al, yes. So the, the plan is during the procurement process to create interest 
for for the contracting community um to uh for the project and inform the the contracting market um of the project however that, all, that will include yes all contractors are required to be unionized uh, or be union during the course of that particular project um, and there is a 30% local contractor requirement, which means 30% of the employees on the job as a total must be within the definition of local, which is the five counties in the North Bay. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. Uh, Renee. Yes, thank you. Renee Saucedo, I work uh, with Raices Collective. We're countywide. And we work with uh, marginalized communities, particularly the Latinx immigrant and indigenous communities. And what I remember as far as the concept was that this multicultural center was a place for underrepresented communities to be able to come together, have cultural events and cultural activities. And it just seems like the library piece has been added now and the multicultural aspect of it is being overshadowed. Um, for example, I, yeah, I don't see any spaces for, you know, uh, cultural activities and community meetings and and things like that that can be loud sometimes. Um, so I was just wondering, is that just not going to be part of the project anymore? That's a great question, Renee. And and the answer is, is yes, that it is still going to be part of the project. Um, we're, we're not at the point of showing floor plans yet. It's still early in the process. Uh, but I know that based on the program that we have, that, that there are, are options that we're considering that do include some large community spaces within the library building, uh, and that those would be uh, managed by uh, the, the, the recreation component of the city uh, specifically for those kinds of programs. Um, so it's it's definitely a both and, not an either or. And and I would encourage you to, to uh, I, th I think Eric can maybe speak to this, that, that libraries can be quite loud now these days. Um, I know that's, a, that's, a, um, that's something that we work to, to change in our own work every day. So, uh, so I, I don't think that it's something that's, that's been forgotten. And, and no, it's, it's something that comes up in, in quite literally every meeting we have on this project is ensuring that that multicultural component isn't lost. Yes, and the library will have, um, will have Spanish language collections, multi a multi-purpose room, as, as well as a variety of other meeting room space for both large and small groups. And we're also intending to have you know, diverse programming, working with community-based organizations to provide services that the community has asked for and can participate in. So all of those things, as, as Harding pointed out, it's a both and kind of scenario. Any other questions before we move on? Great. So we're gonna jump into our, our design discussions. Uh, I wanted to first touch on uh, the, the fire station. So um, the fire station will be located at the, the northern portion of the site along Hearn Avenue. That location is, is driven uh, primarily by the ability to reduce response times to the community. So uh, putting it on that main road, that's gonna obviously in, in, uh, encourage us to rebuild that Hearn and Dutton intersection uh, to give uh, those emergency vehicles uh, the, the, the mechanisms that they need to respond quickly, to clear traffic, to, to make a safe intersection, um, obviously including turning it into a four-way intersection from its current three-way uh, scenario. Um, <clears throat> the fire station, in, in addition to including its basic technical functions like apparatus bays and dorm rooms and, uh, and, and turnout gear, uh, will also include a, a classroom for the fire department's explorers program, which encourages youth to find interest in the fire service. Um, so that'll be built into uh, the, the fire station building. Um, it'll also have its own secured parking um, 
and, and all of its own uh, technical apparatus uh, on site. Um, so that I think is, is a one uh, company uh, location right now. Um, and yeah, will be primarily accessed the engine access will be in and out of, of Hearn, the parking access off of Dutton. The next thing is to, to touch on is the library, uh, which uh, as, as Erica mentioned, will have a largely bilingual collection, um, a, a large popular collection space in the middle. You can kind of see it uh, here, kind of the spine down the middle in, in orange. Um, but also, as Erica mentioned, maker spaces, community spaces. So we think of those sometimes as community spaces might be a, a softer or a cleaner space, a maker space kind of a little rougher, a little dirtier. Um, but then obviously a dedicated spaces uh, adjacent to one another for children's teens and adults. Um, and then uh, as we uh, obviously have space for, for staff and those support spaces. So now I'm going to ask you all to either get out your phones or, or point your browser to uh, www.menti.com uh, and, and use that code. Uh, I'm going to follow along on my own phone so that I know where we are. Uh, that QR code uh, should bring you up to uh, our, our poll play page. Um, and our first polling question, just as a way of getting a sense of, of who's here and uh, is what is your zip code? Um, so if you would please um, <clears throat> use your phone and select your zip code and you'll see the, the, the results uh, pop up here in real time on the screen. And I will uh, just so, so we don't lose it, I'll leave the QR code up there in the corner for a little while so that those who may have missed it the first time can join us. And Karen, I think if you, if it, well, I guess we don't have the, the chat, never mind. If for any reason you're unable to join the mentee.com, we'll also share a link at the end that you can take the online survey at your own leisure. What is the code for Minty? The code is 8300-4089. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll give people about 30 more seconds to get uh, connected and to do this first question, uh, and then we'll, we'll move on to the, the meat of our discussion. All right. If you're still working, that's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to our next thing. I'll keep the, the QR code up in the corner as we get into our next uh, few questions, but I, I want to respect everybody's time. Good to see so many people from, from outside the neighborhood, uh, and, and we look forward to, to hearing all of your thoughts. So 
when we think about architectural ex, um, inspiration, so thinking back to those those early design values of, of inspired by nature, of, of indoor outdoor connections, of natural lighting, um, one of the concepts that we, we and our team have uh, come up with is is one that that leans on the ideas of, of porches and plazas uh, to to use you know deep overhangs and shade structures to create really great dynamic indoor outdoor spaces uh, those those porches could be covered in, in something like the top left where it's very uh, diaphanous and, and see-through and, and lets interesting shadows play on the ground. Or it can be something that's more solid and really allows us a, a really robust uh, multi-seasonal uh, shaded space uh, protected from uh, from the elements a little bit. Um, so that's, that's one of the uh, options that we've been uh, looking at. Another is to really lean into the agricultural uh, aspects of, of Santa Rosa's history and, and look at more agricultural inspired uh, shapes and forms, um, things like barns and sheds. And this also impacts our material choices. Uh, maybe looking here at something that's that's got a little bit more, you know, of a corrugated metal or, or, or something that's a little bit more um, rough around the edges uh, when it comes to its architectural expression. Uh, all of this is about trying to root this uh, architecture in a particular place um, so that it feels at home in Santa Rosa and in the Roseland uh, Bellevue neighborhood. Um, and so that's where we've come to thinking about how we can turn those design values about what, what's important to the community into architectural form. So with those two things in mind, this is our, our first sort of A-B test. Uh, and you're actually allowed to pick either or both. Um, so which architecture scheme do you think reflects the values of the community? Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll pause uh, at the end of this question. And, and I'd, I'd like to hear from somebody as to, as to why they might have chosen one or the other. Um, or if, you're, if, you, if you have a feeling of, of dissatisfaction with either, I uh, wanna hear about that too. Yeah, Wendy. You're on mute, Wendy, sorry. Thank you. I One of the reasons I chose the porch as opposed to the architectural, which I would have thought the architectural would have been better for me, but I, with your explanation, it made me think of uh, the outlet malls in Petaluma, which I find atrocious. Mm -hmm. And I would not want something with steel and metal like that because I don't feel that represents this area. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Glenda. That, that's that's great to hear. So, so far, it seems like a, a lot of you agree with with Wendy uh, on preferring the porch inspired. I would like to hear from from somebody who picked the uh, the agricultural side just to to hear why you thought that that resonated more. Yeah, Sabrina. Hey there. Uh, if it has to do with California native plants and a hardscape a combination along with the agriculture and plants that's low watering systems and maybe a, a semi non, uh, oh, how to say this, where there's a water capture system mm -hmm. uh, that helps, that helps all the things. I think that for, for me, I love the pork schemes, but it's a little, um, not interesting. I, I think that um, agriculture, it, it, when I moved to Guerneville and in, in Sonoma and from San Francisco, everything changed. And I was noticing how much I enjoyed, even if it was smelly, the farms and all the things. And if you're taking over a pasture type 
area, which is exactly what that is, if there was a uh, some caveat that if it was going to get plants and I just got all plants that were California native that I'm not watering hardly at all, for instance, and a hardscape plan with a low maintenance native plan uh, could be fantastic and interesting. That's great. Thanks, Sabrina. Yes, Liz. Okay. Um, actually, I, I'm new to this. It's the first time I've seen this. And I actually voted for both because I don't think you necessarily have to do one or the other. I really like the porches because it makes it very usable. Um, but if we're talking about indoor and outdoor space and connection and connection with nature, which is what you said is one of the one of the ideas, then I think the plants and whatnot and for what you can see here are are, are an agriculture, this is definitely an agricultural area that we were that we're talking about here. I'm I'm even new to this area, would be important. I had two questions and they're probably going to be covered at some point. And I was just wondering what you were going to be doing about like are you putting in solar over um either on what we are building or over the parking lot for shade kind of stuff and um the other thing has to do with one aspect that i wasn't sure about the agriculture inspired was whether there'd be and then the whole design is really um handicap um accessibility but i'm sure because of the world we live in today that that's part of it but I just wanted to make sure and speak it out since I've not been part of any of these meetings. Thank you. No, Liz, th thank you for bringing both of those up. And 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 yes, um, both of those those are uh, are both solar access and uh, or, or, and accessibility are are baked into this project. Um, the California Energy Code uh, requires us to do a certain amount of, of photovoltaic. Uh, we can do that on the roof or we can do that as a shade structure over parking. We just have to provide it one way or the other. Again, it's early enough that we haven't figured out exactly how, but it's gonna be there. Um, and, and accessibility is, is absolutely the kind of thing that is our, our first thought in any landscape or architectural move. If it's not accessible, we've, we've failed at our job. So, um, it, it, but it's definitely something that, that, that we ought to keep bringing up and making sure that we're going above and beyond uh, when it comes to, to making this an inclusive and accessible facility. So thanks for, for speaking up. Any other thoughts or questions on this before we go to our, our next uh, set of questions? All right. So shifting our focus to the interior, uh, taking those same uh, design values that, that we heard about um, and, and trying to see how we can express those on an interior. And I think that the, these, in, these few interior options uh, would work well with either of the exterior options. So I think there's, there's very much a mix and match opportunity here. Um, the, the first of those is you know, not, not straying too far from the answers we heard in the first round of something that's nature inspired, something that uses those warm tones, those, those uh, wood accents, uh, those, those warm uh, oranges and reds and greens uh, to, to really build that, um, that indoor outdoor connection. And I think to, to bring a sense of warmth uh, to the interior. Uh, another is the idea of being more whimsical and playful. So, so maybe if if we think of the nature inspired as something that's maybe softer and darker, uh, something that's brighter and and full of of shape and color uh, is something that would would work in towards that whimsical and playful idea. And uh, and, and I will say as a caveat, th these are images of of both projects that our firm has done, projects that other firms have done, but they are all just meant to, to be inspirations. None of them are representative specifically of anything that's going to go on in this building. This building will be designed for this community uh, from straight out of the box. So, um, And then there is an, an opportunity to, to really lean into the agricultural inspired. So I, I think of this as being similar to uh, to a nature inspired option, but maybe looking at a little bit more of that, you know, exposed rafters and a little bit more of that metal and wood, um, you know, and, and great views and vistas out through, uh, through those agricultural portals. And then finally, just lean into color. Uh, you know, whimsical and playful is maybe more about shape. Color is just that. Let's let's make it a bright, fun, uh, exciting place to be for for people of of all ages. 
So then we're going to, we're going to do our horse race on these four. Um, so, uh, this should have popped up on your phone or your browser now to, uh, to vote on one or multiples of, of these interior, uh, schemes and, and happy to, again, answer questions as, as people are, are deciding. Harding, if you could bring up that QR code real quick, I think oh, we have another you. participant yes. join. Thank you. Great. All right, we'll do maybe 30 more seconds, let people get their votes in. So pretty clear consensus that nobody wants to stay inside a barn. Uh, that's fine, that's good to know. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear from somebody who, who chose uh, either colorful, whimsical, playful, or, or nature inspired, and 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 what uh, what inspired you to make that choice? Yeah, Al. Yeah, hi there. Um, uh, I work over at the Mitote Food Park in Roseland. I don't live oh, immediately great. in the neighborhood, but. Uh, I mean, color is very important to the Latino community and whimsical. I like that idea. And so I would just encourage you to kind of be, try to incorporate some of the cultural elements, cultural arts elements into the color scheme. And I'm sure you'll get more feedback from other people, but I think mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's uh, just a little brighter. People like those kind of things, particularly in that community. That's great. Thanks, Al. Anybody else have a thought or a question? Oh, doing great. I, I really appreciate this. Um, so then um, I'll, I'll, I'll pause once more here before we talk about next steps. Any other questions about the project or, or anything that, that you've seen that uh, you, you want to ask a question about? I'm making my job easy. So looking at next steps again, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, um, we're, we're in the midst of, of finishing up our bridging documents. And so everything that we've discussed tonight, everything that we've heard is, is going to find its way into those criteria documents, uh, which will then be shared with potential uh, design build entities uh, in 2024. Um, th those groups will spend 2024 and 25 really flushing out the design uh, for the site and these first two buildings that are in phase one. And then, as we mentioned, construction hopefully starts <clears throat> in 2026. And, and I'll say that, that that's something that, that uh, Assistant City Manager Jason Nutt mentioned in one of our meetings is that, you know, with, with that kind of timeline, uh, the, the city is, is actively looking at, at new funding opportunities to try to get that that rec component into, if not a concurrent phase, a, a phase that comes shortly after the completion of this one. Um, so we really do want to uh, to reinforce that the, the city is committed to uh, to meeting the expectations of, of this community and the, and the greater Santa Rosa community um, with what was promised. And, uh, and we're just working with the best dollars that we have uh, to date uh, to really focus on, on these two components today. So um, there are going to be other opportunities to, to make your voice heard. Uh, if this wasn't your ideal uh, format, there is a survey link there uh, at the bottom of this page uh, that has uh, identical content to what we've discussed tonight. 
um, but an opportunity for a little bit long, more long form answers. Um, there's also uh, an, an in-person version of this same presentation uh, tomorrow at Roseland Elementary Multipurpose Room at Sebastopol Road. Uh, and then uh, later on this week, uh, the Halloween Bash at Finley Community Park on the 28th. And then we have uh, iPad kiosks and a paper survey at both the Finley Community Center and the Rosen Regional Library. So um, there, there's, there's no rules against voting more than once. Uh, tell your friends, uh, tell your enemies, we wanna hear from everybody. And, uh, and thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate the time that you've given us th this evening uh, and we look forward to, to seeing you again. Yeah, Wendy, please. Wendy's one of our few people who's come to both of these. So I'm really, really proud of Wendy. There we go. Um, quick question you said about the pool would be on the, at the community center or community park. Mm -hmm. And when would that be looked at for working on that? And what area of the park would it be in? I'm going to say a confident I don't know to either of those, <laughs> I um, but, but I, I wonder if, if others here are joining us from the city have a, a better uh, point on that. Um, I I would I would like to say, I mean, if Jeff wants to step in, he can, but uh, because it's moved to Southwest Community Park, it's just not in the scope of this this current project and what we're pursuing, but it is knowing that the, the public interest, there, there would be future tasks associated to it, but uh, no timelines known right now, um, the interest has been gathered. Uh, Jeff, did you have anything else? I didn't mean to interrupt, but you could have that. No, thank you, Lisa. Um, I, I would just add that um, certainly it's it's pretty old and we would look at revisiting the master plan for Southwest Community Park, but it does include in the master plan, the potential for recreation space center aquatics area um, in the current master, well, the very old current master plan. Um, so there is dedicated space for this type of space, but again, certainly with the amount of time that's been there and the nature of how this project has evolved, we would certainly look at more engagement of what that would look like if uh, in a future phase. And I'll just throw one more piece in. Uh, the master plan that Jeff references shows that that pool and community, structured community space is actually at the corner of Hearn Avenue and I believe it's Silver Spur. There's an undeveloped parking lot and associated large undeveloped field area. Uh, that is where these facilities were intended to go in that master plan. Uh, obviously, as Jeff mentioned, we would revisit other options if there were other op if there were better options, but that would still be the proposal we'd be moving toward in future consideration. Thanks, Jace. Uh, Al, yeah. Yeah, it was more just a suggestion about outreach, because I know that you're doing the meeting tomorrow, I think, at the school there in Roseland. Mm -hmm. Having done a lot of community engagement in Roseland, if you want parents to come to those school meetings, it's a good idea to get a flyer in the backpack of the kids to take home to the parents. So maybe too late for tomorrow, but just for future reference, uh, you know, that was a good way always to make sure parents in English and Spanish to get a, get flyers out to, to the kids, to the parents, so they're aware of the meetings at the school and they show up. Love that idea. Thanks, Al. All right. I have a question. Yes. Cassandra. I, I have two households in this neighborhood right on the edge of this park. When did you ever reach out to the residents of this neighborhood about this project? So I know that as part of our outreach about these outreach meetings, we've sent uh, postcards to everyone within at 500 yards i can't remember exactly a quarter mile um so i, I know we've tried to uh directly address uh, our, our immediate neighborhood um <clears throat> beyond that i know that the yes just trying to get the word out through all of the different city channels um the newsletters email all of those things um have been our, our primary mechanism. So if, if you've missed us, I'd, I'd love to hear other uh, ideas that you might have about how we can improve our outreach. Well, I got your most recent postcard, but we have a house on Silver Spur and a house on Tuxhorn and a house just off Dutton Meadow. Not one of those households got any notification of this except for your design review survey postcard and the, about the Zoom meeting tonight. Those are the only, that's the only thing we've received. Mm -hmm. I mean, this greatly impacts our homes. Sure. 
I, I'm just flabbergasted. We never, three households, never got one notification. And many of my neighbors have said the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think we can do better. Yeah, let's hope so, because that's a shit show over at that park now. And you guys are just impacting it worse to the point where we're ready to rent our house out to the nice Hispanic people that want to live next to this or sell them. You know, some notification would have been greatly appreciated. So if I could uh, just jump yeah. in here, okay. um, that this project is not focused on Southwest Community Park. That was a result of community conversation relating to the project site which was at Hearn Avenue uh, and uh, and the extension of Dutton Avenue. And so- um, It's adjacent to the park and the aquatic center is right across the street from my house. I, I, Not I, where I, I want to live. I've been in this neighborhood for over 20 years. It's- I, I understand and what I'm, I'm just- That's why I own three houses here. What I'm explaining is, is that the reason you wouldn't receive any direct notification on that is that is not part of the specific project we're working on right now. Um, when we get to the place where we're actually looking at doing development of the pool, um, there will be a substantial amount of public outreach, uh, especially to the neighbors relating to that project. Um, but that's that's not uh, we're not at that stage right now. Um, we chose as a part of this library, fire station and community center project. Uh, to uh, not place it on that property and relocate it from Southwest Community Park. The decision of the community that responded said, we'd like to keep it at Southwest Community Park in the future planning stage. Okay, well, we have a house just off of Dutton Meadow right next to this, and that house didn't get notification either. I mean, this greatly impacts us. We're already dealing with multiple issues with the, large population that uses this park and the fact that the police department, they throw their hands up in the air and tell us we can't do anything. We just don't have the manpower, you know, and we're going to put more and more into this neighborhood. There's nowhere to park on the weekend as it is. We cannot have, I also own another property a little further away. That's large property. We can't have any of our family events at our homes because we can't park we can't hear you know it, it's it's gotten to the point of being ridiculous and you're just going to impact this neighborhood more and more and more and invite more and more people in but you're not giving us notice I would like to put my house on the market or rented it before this happened before the people knew about it I would have sold my houses all three of them gone you know, and just it's very frustrating to invest that much money into a neighborhood and be impacted like this. Yeah. Thanks for your thoughts, Cassandra. Does anybody else have a, a question about this project? Yes, Wendy. I it's not a project, it's just a comment. My personal view is this is going to increase the value of my home because this is going to be a great having the library nearby, having the fire station even closer, I think it's going to be a great thing. And that's all I wanted to say. And thank you so much for this. And I'm going to say bye now. So yeah. bye. Thanks, Wendy. I, I did want to also point out, I love plugging anytime I can. Um, this is this is one of our, our public outreach, uh, you know, for this phase of work. But there's a, there's a web page uh, that the city has and maintains. It's in the flyer. Really, I really would love um, everyone here to make feel confident to go to that uh, website. We keep it updated. We kind of talk through it. We have a CEQA, we have an environmental process coming up uh, still on this project. We have other we have other outreaches that are going to occur. And so we'll be keeping you informed that way. Um, so uh, and I, you know, it's hard to hear about that other stuff, but I appreciate I appreciate you guys being here today. And, um, you know, and I, they can throw in my email. Um, I have I'm I'm here to support anyone with questions and comments after this, um, uh, my email is lwelsh at srcity.org. Um, Thanks, Lisa. And I'm happy to field it. Thank awesome. you. Yeah, June, you had a question. Yeah, I was wondering about the athletic and community facility that you said would come later, not the pool, but the one athletic community facility for the site. I wondered 
where on the plan it would go in like an outline of is there a size at all? And I just wondered, I mean, it looks like there is a lot of parking and a lot of pavement on the site overall and with the with the road and just wondering about that. A lot of the input had been around nature inspired, which really means that maybe a little more information about what you're actually doing with the nature and natural grounds around and how much you're maintaining as natural um, and how much would be paved and you know where future uh, buildings might be going. Yeah, great. Thank, thanks for that question, June. So I, I hope everyone can see the the slide that I just brought up from earlier in the show. Uh, it's not north up. So uh, if you look at the bottom left corner of the image, that's Hearn Avenue, kind of running a out off to the side. So the the fire station is the first thing you see. That's on the northernmost portion of the site. Then there's a shared parking area, uh, which will include a, a lot of our stormwater bioswales to to uh, to uh, to collect and treat uh, storm water on site. Uh, there's also a handful of uh, existing live oak trees, uh, mature live oak trees that we're trying to preserve on that eastern edge of the site. And then uh, the next building you see, whoa, that was a really big QR code, um, <laughs> was uh, is the library, the multicultural library. And then it, it almost looks like one building, but it's actually two. So on the southern end of the site, so the furthest to the right on this image is where uh, that future multi-purpose sports and events center uh, would land. Um, and in between those two uh, uh, buildings would be a shared um, sort of community lawn. Um, and then we're, you can just barely see sort of the, the, the rough plantings beyond the, the future rec center that's our primary stormwater uh, treatment facility, uh, again, using our low impact development um, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and, and native plantings uh, to, again, treat our stormwater as much as we can on site. Um, so the, there's, there's always like the concern, uh, as you've heard from others, uh, that if we, if we under uh, park the facility uh, that ends up impacting negatively the residential communities around. Uh, so we did try to, to provide adequate parking for sort of peak load inclusive of all of the buildings that would be on site. So that's why it seems like an awfully big parking lot for maybe just a library, uh, but the par parking lot is sized for the library and the future rec center. And the target square footage of that rec center is somewhere in the 20 to 25,000 square foot range. So I think I answered all your questions, but let me know if I did. Maybe just then with the parking, is there, I understand there'd be vehicle parking, but what is there for transit accessibility and making it easy and comfortable for folks that do take transit to relieve the impact on the neighborhood that way? Yeah, there absolutely will be, uh, probably in this first phase, that transit stop will be a pull-through stop in the parking lot. Uh, as we build out the rest of Dutton Avenue, there will be a, a bus pull-off uh, kind of mid-block, uh, kind of right in front of the library. I have a question. When yes. you say multicultural library, what cultures are being included in that? I didn't know that we were supposed to specify. Well, um, I mean, I, obviously, you know, I, I will. I will freely admit that I am not a Santa Rosa resident, uh, but but I know how important the Hispanic community is in in Sonoma County. Um, but I also know that there's there's lots of others. So I I, yeah. I don't think that the intent was to be exclusive uh, and, and to focus on any one uh, culture. Well, we have a huge Asian community as well, mm -hmm. and none of this is design even when you send it out in any other language. So I'm kind of, that's a concern. I mean, if we're going to be inclusive, we need to include all our neighbors. Absolutely. And, and, and I, that, that's, a, I mean, I'm glad you made that point because the online survey is offered in, in English, Spanish and Mandarin. Um, so that, 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 but I'm we, glad you made that point. We have a pretty large Cambodian and Laos and Thai community. We have Watts are all around us, you know, it's it's a pretty, you know, and I know a lot of the um, first generation or the immigrants, they don't, they don't speak much English and they've asked questions about this. And I mean, is there a way to include them? I think there ought to be, yeah. Would be nice. <laughs>
Because they would benefit from something like this. Of course. Great. Well, we, we thank you again so much for the, the time you've given us tonight and, and all this insight and, and really thoughtful comments and questions. So uh, thanks so much to everybody. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at other events and, and have a great evening. Thank you.